He was born because of a crime. Do I look like the man who rapes my birth mother? He said, Mum, am I a rape baby? And I said, no, you're my baby. No one wants to talk about what we're going through. We shouldn't have to hide it anymore. I'm putting the one of the hardest stories about my life out there. And it's yeah, it's petrifying. That was literally just minutes after I'd give birth to him. I just looked so young. I was only 14 when I met a man called Arshad Hussain. He was 10 years older than me, and from that moment, he began grooming me. At the time, I didn't see it for what it was. I thought that's how love was supposed to be. I was 15 when I got pregnant. God, I still remember him being in my arms. And I just had that moment, that instant bond that I think only a mother kind of, you know, feels. <laughs> He's so junky. <laughs> I was so excited to be a mum. But as I got older, I started to understand what had happened to me. The abuse of young girls in Rotherham was deep-rooted and misogynistic. Oh, Hussain was the ringleader behind rape the Rape after rape, assault after assault. He has now been jailed for 35 years. Sammy Woodhouse gave birth to a son after she was raped. I remember when those thoughts first started running through my head. I was panicking about my son. I thought, what am I going to tell my son? I, I couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. My son were only 12 when I had to tell him that his dad had raped and abused me, and that's how we were born. He didn't want to be the person who he was. He didn't want to be in his own skin. I blamed myself. I felt so stupid. We both felt so alone and there was nowhere for us to turn. There must be others out there feeling the same way. The worst feeling is feeling like you're alone. You're questioning everything about yourself. Do I look like a rapist? Looking in the mirror, almost like I could see the man who raped my mother looking back at me you grow up with all these ideas of who you are. You're kind and you're nice and you're loving. And then you find out you were conceived in a really violent, almost hateful way. It pulls the heart out of your world. Neil grew up adopted and traced his birth mother when he was 27. Hi, Hi. Sammy. Is it Neil? Yeah. It was then that he discovered he were born after she was raped by a stranger in a park. When you hear those words, it's like somebody's almost like a video game punched into your chest and ripped um, your inside out. Yeah. I just broke down completely and utterly lost it. Um, so I, I did meet with my birth mother and, and one of the first things I said to her was if I look like the man who did this to you, hmm. walk away, I don't want to bring that back. Yeah, and upset her. Um, and what did she say? She, she said, it's fine, you don't look like him. That really changed things for me. The man who did that to my birth mother is, he is just nothing to me. Mm. For You know, I can't be clear enough about this, that how angry I, I was at him. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't want anything to do with him. To all intents and purposes, I don't think of myself as having a birth father. Yeah. I have my birth mother and that's it. Yeah. And that's enough. 
for me, what's kind of hard to, to sit here and listen to is that you had all this to deal yeah. with and it's affected you so much. And you, you as an adult dealing with this, you was like in your 20s. My son was 12 years old um, with no one yeah. to talk to. Um, so I, I'm kind of just sat here thinking, um, I feel in a way like I've failed him. I don't think you have at all. I think by being open and honest, mm. you've done the best by him. So long as there is love there mm. and you can show that love and explain that how he was conceived is the most unimportant thing in the world. It's, you are my son. Uh, you know, I love you beyond anything. You're part of me and that's the important thing. Mm. And we might have to work at it more every day than most families because we're both hurting, mm. but we're together and that's the important thing and you're my son. I've tried so hard to be the best mum I can to my son. But no matter how much I love him, he still has his shadow hanging over him. And I know he has questions about his dad, but I don't know whether the reality would really help him. I had to survive. I had to survive to leave. The next train to arrive at platform one. I packed some nappies for the child. Some baby milk. Put them in the bottom of the pram. And walked out the door. on a train and never went back. Mandy escaped the abuse, but she couldn't escape the consequences. Her son was born with a genetic disability. Neither of us have ever talked to another mum with a child born from abuse. So this is a first for both of us. I always say I'm the survivor. My mm. son's a victim because he is. He's, even though I carry it on in my head, everything that's wrong with him is because, because of, of what abuse. happened to me. Because a crime happened to me. Mm. It happened to him as well. People don't, you know, when they'd find out, they'd say, you're oh, disgusting. You, you know, you had an affair with your dad. That's horrible. Like, how could you do all that? I didn't. I was 11, mm. maybe younger, but the first recollection I have, I was 11. Was there ever anyone that said, this is not your fault? No. No. Has anybody even now, after all these years, not just as a child, but as an adult and even after, you know, him going to prison, has anybody ever said, this isn't your fault? No. Well, I'm going to cry now. Well, I'm going to be the first. It's not your fault. And you're not to blame. How many women are sat at home now in my position I was all them years ago thinking I'm going to be stuck here forever. Can you not open that door and get the hell out? Feel a little bit lost for words. I mean, she's just been through so much. And I just think she's by far one of the bravest, if not the bravest people that I've ever met in my life. Everyone I've met has felt so alone. And there's nothing here to help people like us. I want to see how people elsewhere in the world have changed that.
Rwanda is one of the only places in the world with specialist counselling for mothers and children born of rape. It was a massacre that saw a tenth of the population killed. This country suffered a genocide in 1994. Women, children, they were hunted down and slaughtered. 800,000 people were massacred here in just 100 days. The killers were a mixture of regular forces and Hutu militias who took to the streets with clubs and machetes. <laughs> Their victims were the minority Tutsis and some moderate Hutus who stood against them. were also a weapon of the genocide. And hundreds of thousands of mainly Tutsi women were raped. turi guhunga abangiraga ho nako basa tero cyampumburaga mu biri wacu wanje waru gikoresho cyabo ku mugaragaro nako bahishaga umwe yavaga aho ndakajya aho ndakava aho ndakajya aho ndakava aho ndakajya niko cyasega gakinga ritsi hari yakinyishe nabi Claire was thrown into a mass grave among the dead bodies Somehow, she lived. But her ordeal wasn't over. She realised she was pregnant by one of her attackers. Claire even thought about killing her baby when it were born. But when she saw her daughter's face for the first time, she knew she couldn't. Hi, you must be Claire and Elizabeth. How are you? And you must be Elizabeth. <laughs> Can I give you a hug as well? Hi. How are you? Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to meet you. Claire kept the truth hidden for years. It was only when she met other mothers like her that she opened up and told her daughter how she was born. Mm. Nobody <laughs> As many as 20,000 children were born from rape during the genocide against the Tutsi. Here, they come together to talk about how it's affected them. What happened here in 1994 is very different to what happened to me. But we still have so much in common. It's been incredible to see how children and mothers here dealt with their struggles by coming together. I just wish me and my son had not felt so alone. Since I've been back from Rwanda, I've just been thinking about, you know, everything I learnt there and the people that I met. And one thing um, that really stood out for me is, you know, how everybody in Rwanda came together through a charity and just how much it helped them. So today I've invited some of the people from uh, the documentary to come together in Sheffield. And for some of us, 
it's going to be the first time that they've, they've ever met, you know, somebody that's been through their situation. So today's a really big day for them. Talking about this is always going to be painful, but it feels like this is a first step. My son's birth father is my father. It's not a lot of people I've told that. I think you're the second person. And people said to me, oh, you will have to adopt him, you'll have to adopt him, you can't look after him, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a constant reminder, constant all the time. And I said, no, it's not. Well, my son, yeah. it matters to me to do this because I've always been silent. Now I'm a woman, fully grown woman, who's got a gob on her. She's willing to use it. <laughs> And now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, well, every single, every single one of you, honestly, you, I think you're incredible anyway. Not to be ashamed of, nothing to be ashamed of at all. And nobody can stop me.